I'm Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Be inspired to live big and bold and take action to turn your dreams into your reality. Go beyond obstacles and limits of your thinking. Accelerate results to catapult yourself to success. I'm a visibility expert who gives media makeovers to clients, booking them on media interviews and turning their books into international bestsellers with guaranteed results. Join me at DebbieDashinger.com. Dare to do great things. Dare to shine. It's all about you becoming a visionary and leading the path. Welcome to your daring new life. Debbie Dashinger here, and I am just back from Palm Springs, like one of the greatest getaways, really, for me. I go there, and it's like my body's wisdom is just so pleased to be there. 110 degrees, you know, super hot, right? Dry, heat, desert, all of that. However, it just resonates for me. I'm sure if someone ever did my cartography, they'd find it's it's a good line for me to be on astrologically. So I took my dog. She's young. She's never been. And I kept warning her, 110, baby. It's going to be different for you than LA. And she was so good, tired a lot, you know, but boy, we went out in great morning walks and we hung out with some people and we went to an opening of a friend's clinic. He just opened a wellness clinic there and I was interviewed on 94.3 K News in Palm Springs, like amazing interview actually. We went deep and I was with my friend Gunther Mueller and then I came back. I'll be going there every hmm, six weeks for a while. So it's going to be business, and I got to tell you, one of the best places in the world I could be going right now for business. So I'm happy to be back with you because this is also one of the greatest places for me. Cartography on radio there and podcasts would definitely come up very positive. I was just featured recently as an icon of influence, and I'm also featured in the ultimate directory of podcasters with the world's leading podcasters. And I ask you, so many people want to be a published author. They don't quite know how to get started. And so if you're a first-time author or you're a seasoned author and you just want to bump up your platform, you can apply to write a chapter. There's a new anthology I'm rolling out, and it is called, with great purpose, it's called I Am Still Here. And if you can feel the energy of that, there's a reason why it's called I am still here. So the people who are signing up, applying to be a part of this, perfect. They're going to be inspirational stories, trials to transformation. You go to debbyd.net slash anthology. And the great news is this compilation book is going to receive global distribution. I am going to launch it to a guaranteed international bestseller. It's got a ton of bonuses coming with it. So I am still here. Anthology, seeking men and women authors, first time, seasoned authors. You can email if you want to apply, bestseller at debbiedashinger.com or debbied.net slash anthology. Remember, it's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash anthology. And you can become a best-selling published author this year. A little bit later on the show, I've got Natasha Che here. She is a PhD economist turned tech entrepreneur and personal growth coach. Natasha has a personal and valuable story to tell for anybody who's going through career transition and trying to find their North Star. And Natasha's helped many coaches and experts to create and sell their audio courses and launch their podcast. So yes, Natasha will be on a little later on Dare to Dream. And my reminder, it's, by the way, not just to you, but it's to me too, always, because I'm a bit of a go-getter. And that's a great quality. And one of the downsides to being a go-getter is the reminder, the self, self-care reminder, relaxation reminder, pull away from the work and do something contrary. It's just as much of a contribution. So I remind you as well to relax and allow what is to just be what is without resisting, without controlling, just to be in flow. This is great poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay, which goes, soar, eat ether, see what has never been seen, be lost, 
a climb. So the reminder is about realigning focus, realigning values and attention. If we'll let ourselves relax into this day and keep our mind focused on majestic strangeness of the world. Don't you love that? The idea of majestic strangeness of the world, because that's pretty much what it's like every day. When you allow yourself to really see what is and be present, presence requires letting go of old habits, uh, letting go of complaints, and letting go of hangups. So stop insisting, just for today, stop insisting that things are done on your punishing schedule. Take more time to chill, to listen. Listen to others, refrain from chasing after everything, and skip doing things now and then. I know, unthinkable. I sometimes look at my to-do list and it's like, hmm, what would happen if I just did three? And that feels so good that that's what I do. So skip doing things now and then and be aware of presence. Lighten up. So again, the reminder is relax and allow what is. To just be what is without resisting or controlling and to be in flow. When we come back, Natasha Che is here and she's going to share how businesses can leverage the marketing power of podcasting, how to expand your email list and build an engaged following to convert more customers. Stay right there. We'll be right back. How do you comfort a grieving child? It's not easy, but the book... My Mommy is a Butterfly facilitates the process by introducing your child to the concept of signs from the afterlife. These signs will prove to your child that their loved one is still around them and still loves them. The heartwarming story encourages your child to focus on the power of love and how it transcends death. My Mommy is a Butterfly will uplift your child with hope and resiliency. Your child will become empowered to learn that death is not only an ending, but also the beginning of a relationship where love never dies. Written by Michelle Bieber, My Mommy is a Butterfly is available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Whether you're a wine novice, a wine lover, or a wine specialist, you will love directsellers.com slash Deb's Wine Wonders because it's sourced from boutique artisan vineyards from around the world. Give the wines as gifts for colleagues to bring to social situations or just enjoy it with family and friends. The box of wines I've been receiving from directsellers.com slash Deb's Wine Wonders are superb, to be frank. They take care in the wine they choose. Their in-house wine experts ensure that the members get only the best. They've been tasting and selecting wine for over 15 years. The goal with this club is to send you wine that you love. Each month, our experts select great premium wines from wineries around the globe. Your satisfaction is guaranteed at directsellers.com slash Deb's Wine Wonders. That's direct, C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com slash Deb's Wine Wonders. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? Welcome back. Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. My guest today is Natasha Che, tech entrepreneur, premier expert on podcast conversion. And Natasha is the founder of Soundwise, a mobile-centric audio publishing platform to sell on-demand audios. Natasha is a contributor to Huffington Post and entrepreneur. She's author of the book, 
podcast conversion secrets. She's a frequent speaker at industry conferences and known for combining personal growth wisdom with no-nonsense business advice. She holds a PhD in economics from Georgetown University. She lives in Washington, D.C. And if you'd like to follow her, go to MySoundWise, that's W-I-S-E, MySoundWise.com. Natasha, welcome to Dare to Dream. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I'm so excited to be on. Me too. It's incredible since our inception of having met in April and Mm -hmm. finding out more about what you're creating in the world. So this is now just not for my listeners. This is for me too, because you're speaking to me and what I do, leveraging podcasting, growing a business. I'm totally interested in this. So yeah. So by the way, I just want to applaud you because I listened to the the first part, the intro part of your podcast that you that you just uh, that you just did. I just want to applaud you that, that that was well done. And I just you know I wish more interview hosts can do what you do, which is combine their own personalities and their own personal knowledge into the interviews. And that will really help a lot of podcasts to increase conversion. Bing 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 bing. So I know this is true. I can't take credit for it, but I will tell you when I started out in, well, there was only radio 11 years ago. There wasn't even podcasts, but I had a lot of chutzpah and I had this baby show. I mean, I was just a baby in the industry, but I had a lot of balls, you know, and I would write to people like John Gare, who who was the uh, producer of Oprah Winfrey's radio network when she was on radio. I don't know if she still is, but she had her own radio network. And I wrote to people like him and uh, Ron, the guy who created West Westwood One, the biggest conglomerate. And I'd be like, could you listen to this MP3 and give me feedback? And these guys were so kind. And they did listen and they did did send feedback. And one of the big ones was, you know, sweetie, you're really featuring people. But why people tune in is because of you. They're either going to fall in love with you and follow you or not. So you need to imbue your shows with much more of you. So that's where that piece came about is because of that. Yes, that's that's so right on. And uh, if we have time, I want to share also with your listeners who may want to start their own podcast or maybe who have already have their podcast, a more structured way to actually, you know, insert that personality into the show. All right. We're going to do that a little later on because that is just, you know, too much of a cliffhanger for me. (laughs) More structure, more personality a little later on. How did you get here, my dear? PhD economist. You become a tech entrepreneur. You become a personal growth coach. That's a crazy transition from what you graduated in. What was that journey? I know. That's so crazy. So because, you know, I went to school for economics, which is totally left brain. And uh, after doing that for like 15 years, I finally, you know, get the hint from my higher self that that's actually not you. (laughs) So um, over two years ago, I took the hint from my higher self, from my my intuition to leave a job, a perfectly fine job, high profile, and then um, to start my own thing. Except at the time, my higher self didn't tell me what my next step was. So unlike most people, you know, um, they had a side business or a side hustle going on. And when that is uh, going well, and then, you know, people take the next step. That wasn't true for me at all. So because I thought, you know, uh, people always tell you, leap and the net will appear, right? <laughs> so right. that's what I thought. I thought like, mm-hmm. as, because then I felt like I was free falling, but I kept <laughs> hoping, okay, the net, where's the net? <laughs> but it didn't, it, 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 well, the net didn't seem to show up at all. And I felt like I just uh, fell straight and hit the ground floor. And so, so that was uh, very frustrating and in the process of searching for my clarity. So what I tell people is, you know, if you follow your heart, if you follow your true calling, good things will happen. I can promise you good things will happen. However, it may not happen in the timeline that you wanted <laughs> or your ego wanted. Totally. So, yes. Yeah, so so the, what happened is uh, in a, it, a few months after I took the leap, I started a podcast. 
I just got the inspiration to start a podcast, and I didn't know why. And a few months later, five months later, it was voted one of the best podcasts in the Washington D.C. area because it was a interview podcast featuring Washington D.C. entrepreneurs. So,、uh, as I was doing that, I was getting you know I was getting more listeners by the day, but I also was increasingly frustrated because I didn't have a business model behind. And so I would, I felt like I was sitting on so much potential because you know, audience is, audience is potential, and of course you know this because you you're you're in the business. But you know, really, I didn't have a way to actually take that listeners on the next step of their journey with me. So what I realized is, you know, that is just not the right way to do a podcast. And also, you know, I tell a lot of my clients. Like recently, I was talking to、um, a business coach、um, who teaches people how to be good on on videos.、Um, she started her podcast six months ago, and so I asked her, "Okay, have you gotten any clients or customers from the podcast?" And she's like, "No, not yet, but I figure podcast is a long term game." But that's actually so not true, because you know most people. I think when they first started podcast, it just like when I first started, they thought you know the most important thing is to get more listeners. But actually, that is not at least at the beginning the prime that shouldn't be the primary primary goal for your podcast. Hundred percent. So I want to go back to this because I I. Intimately know what you're saying. I was an actress and a singer for most of my life. I mean, literally, born, boom. That's what I came out doing. That's all I did. I went to summer stock in the summers as a little kid, and I would just perform my way through life. Went to USC. I graduated. I immediately in theater and film and television, and it's what I did out in the world. And one day I woke up. I was an adult working as an actress, and something changed. And it was. Riveting in the worst way because it was my identity. I knew nothing else but to be that, do that. And if that passion was gone, if something was switching, I was lost. And the only thing I knew how to do was to surrender. Totally uncomfortable. And it took three plus years of being. It felt like in the wilderness. The good thing was I was so creative. I tried this. I tried that. I made jewelry. I had a business. I was, spe- you know, doing speaking. So that was great. I was able to pursue many things that were really fun. But I knew each time, gosh, this isn't it. This is wonderful, but that's not it. So it took time. I would love just give us one piece, one value for the listeners who are going through career transition, and they want to find their true north. What can you offer them? You know what I've learned that you know the most important lesson that I've learned is to keep taking action, even when you don't have. One hundred percent clarity, because that's you know a lot of times that's what clarity happens is, you know you're not going to get a divine download straight away that lay out the next fifty years of your life. In most cases, that doesn't happen. What, most time, what happens is when when you take a small piece of action. And then you're able to evaluate, and you're able to see, okay, which direction you want to go next. And without that action, even if you you feel like it's in the wrong direction, still it's ten thousand times better than not doing anything. So you know, because I also you know coach people on you know developing their own. Intuitive guidance to find their own path, and the one of the first things I tell people is, whenever you feel stuck, when you, whenever you feel like things are not moving in your life, ask for guidance on not not a, not about the purpose of your life, but on what is the immediate next step you can take. You know,、yes. the immediate next step can be, you know, you need a nap. <laughs> so、um, it can also you know, be go to go to this event. So、um, I can tell you from my own personal example. Now I run a platform, which is a audio publishing platform for experts and other influencers for to you know sell their their own audio materials. But I didn't start that way. I started with my own podcast. 
And that seemed like that podcast, you know, eventually didn't didn't go anywhere, you know, because I didn't have a business behind. But that really is a huge part of my inspiration to actually start Soundwise. Got it. Fear, because, that's huge. Yeah, because, because when I started a podcast and I, and I started to realize, okay, here are these problems that podcaster, like podcast hosts, maybe in a sim- similar position as I was in, that these are their problems. And now I could build a product to solve their problems. But that I wouldn't have had that knowledge if I didn't do anything, you know, to take the first step. So I have a question for you because I know we're going to leap into where you're existing now and your expertise and how you really help people take a podcast and just exponentially grow a business. But Natasha, is podcasting for everybody? No. De- well, it, well, I, I tell people, you know, whenever there is a new trend, you know, before you jump jump on the bandwagon because podcasting is really hot right now. You know, everybody is wanting to start a podcast, but it's definitely not for everybody. Nothing is for everybody. But I would say it's really, you know, it's probably you should think about starting a podcast. If you are in the kind of business that um, where education and knowledge and transformation is a centerpiece, so that, that is a one kind of scenario. For example, a lot of coaches and experts and influencers, um, consultants. So because, because audio is an amazing format to allow you to actually showcase what you know in a very intimate setting. It's way more intimate than just putting text or blogs on the web. Because people can discern more of your personality. People feel you're talking directly into people's ears. And podcasting is a, a very, you know, democratic platform. Everybody can start, you know. And there are more and more podcast listeners. It's a format people are getting listeners, customers are getting more and more familiar with, you know, um, over a quarter of Americans now listen to podcasts on a monthly basis. So, it's um, so that's something that definitely to think about. It's a great medium for conveying your knowledge and expertise, and also the also you know some people may wonder, well, how does that compare to starting a YouTube channel? And the difference here is that you know with audio, because people listen to this a lot of times when they're multitasking. Mm-hmm. So when people in the car driving or people are running errands. People don't usually have the um, have in circumstances. People usually don't have the leeway to immediately turn you off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, unlike in videos, like people's attention span is very short because they're staring directly into the screen. So what that means is it really gives you more room to actually elaborate on what you know. Mm-hmm. You don't have to like a grab. Of course, if you grab people's attention, and you should from the get go, that's great. But it gives you more room to actually, you know, elaborate, actually make a bigger impact on people's life rather than just giving people sound bites. Perfect segue, because that's exactly what's going to happen in our next segment is Natasha is going to elaborate so that you can learn more about the hottest content marketing trend today, which is podcasting. Find out how you can, if you're interested, if this is in your wheelhouse, how you can capitalize and create a massive business for yourself by doing a podcast. And I have a million questions that I hope to get answered to because this really intrigues me. It's my business. So I love to learn from somebody like her. You're listening to Dare to Dream radio and podcast. Join me after the show on Facebook at Dare to Dream Radio and TV. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Debbie Dashinger's radio interview mastery program is a unique branded system that works. MediaMasteryRadio.com puts you on a fast track to grow your business and easily book interviews. 
Learn how at MediaMasteryRadio.com. Debbie is fiercely committed to guiding entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, healers, and business people. Learn how to leverage your radio appearances to grow your business and increase your visibility at MediaMasteryRadio.com. What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? beingyouclass.com. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day, and most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if we thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing? So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at ProjectForgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness. love wine? Do you enjoy drinking it or sharing it? Well, maybe you know a lot about wine, maybe you don't. Thanks for entrusting me with picking and choosing the most amazing wines from all over the world and delivering them to your home or business. You will receive as few or as many bottles of wine as you like with tasting notes in your magical box of wine detailing the regions, the history, and even food and wine pairing we will deliver to you the best wine in the world so get in get wine get social at directsellers.com slash deb's wine wonders sit back and truly enjoy our wines because we take great pride we have invested a great deal of time selecting the most incredible wines from all over the world we know you'll enjoy and want to share at directsellers.com slash Deb's Wine Wonders. That's direct, C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com slash Deb's Wine Wonders. Yum. Welcome back. This is Debbie Dashinger. And if you're just tuning in to Dare to Dream, I'm interviewing Natasha Che founder of MySoundWise.com. So let's start here sort of at the beginning so we can maybe build some architecture around this. Businesses leveraging a podcast, Natasha, how can a business leverage the marketing power of podcasting? Yeah, that's a great question. So the answer is actually, you know, Obviously, the first step is you can just go start a podcast. However, you know, um, there is a good way, the more efficient way and the less efficient way to actually do your podcast to actually get your business result. And we mentioned a little bit in the last segment that, you know, a lot of uh, businesses or solopreneurs, when they start a podcast, the first instinct, and I think it's probably everybody's instinct is how can I get as many listeners as possible? And then, you know, people end up spending a lot of time in, you know, uh, promoting you know, social media, you know, um, running advertising on their podcast uh, for their podcast to try to get more listeners and more exposures. But, you know, what I tell my clients and also the, the first rule that I also, um, tell people in my upcoming course, the 
podcast conversion master course is that you really need to be mindful of the 80-20 rule of mm-hmm. podcasting. Okay, 80-20 rule. I love that. Uh, work less in your podcast, achieve more. What is an 80-20 or your 80-20 rule? How does that apply to podcasts and how can we implement that? Yeah, so it's it's similar to, you know, when you start a new, any new business, any new project as a podcast is, uh, you can think of it as a product, as a business in itself. You want to first try to find what is your conversion sweet spot? What is you know, when you set up your podcast, you want to think about what is the next step of the customer journey that you want to take your listener on and how you can effectively get people to get to the next step of that journey. In Natasha, other words, when you say that, is that akin to a funnel? So in other words, if somebody, for instance, comes on your website and says, awesome, I want that free report that Debbie's giving out and they sign up and then a week later they get an email that invites them to a free video. And then a week after that, maybe there's a $70 product I'm offering for seven and so on and so forth. So the next right step, the next right step. Is that what you mean? That's exactly what I mean is when people start a podcast, because people are more used to the funnel as a, you know, online marketing thing, but podcast is also, you know, it's a piece of your funnel. So any new funnel, when you set it up, you want to actually, you know, test it, right? You actually want to make it right. And for podcasting, a big part of it is what you say, how you say it, how you structure each of your episodes in order to achieve whatever goal you want to achieve. But the first thing is you want to be clear what is your goal is, what is the next step you want people to take. Is that to subscribe to your podcast? Is that to get on your email list? Is that to, you know, schedule a free consultation with you? What is it? So um, for SoundWise, uh one of the motivations of when I started Soundwise is to exactly use my podcast to leverage podcast as the top layer of my funnel. So, you know, my podcast, uh, anybody who subscribed to your podcast on Soundwise, you actually get people's email address mm-hmm. and then, you know, move people up to that, um, to that conversion channel. But the thing is, you still need to figure out, you know, exactly how you achieve that. Right. And a lot of people would, you know, uh, when they start a podcast and they tell me, oh yeah, my goal is just to increase my reach and to, you know, build my brand. Well, but the thing is building a brand, it's, it, of course it's all good, but it's not a specific enough goal. So if you if you were if you were thinking about just building my brand, to me that's not a specific goal. So you can do that, but you end up doing maybe eighty percent of the work, and then you don't get really much out of it. I love this. So I'm going to go back to your eighty twenty rule. And so what I hear you saying is that people they're misaligned or they're actually not utilizing this machine in the most positive way it can. And they end up spending a lot of production time, a lot of money, a lot of energy, but they're not seeing sales. So I'd love to know how can a podcaster reverse that? So instead they can serve time and start to produce consistent money. Oh, yeah, that's such a good question. So there are, you know, a lot of elements that goes into this from, you know, how you position your podcast, you know, who, how you you need to figure out who your target audience is. And, you know, um, what's the format of your podcast? Is that a interview? Or is that a solo show? What, What it depends on the nature of your business. And Beyond that, very important, and also there's, uh, you know, um, a huge element is how you, what you can do to actually build that listener community to increase engagement for your podcast. But what I want to talk about today, you know, it's really a very important piece is how do you structure your yeah. episodes? What do you actually say? <laughs> in your episodes. And in my course, the podcast conversion master course, I teach people a five part podcast episode formula. And that has, you know, I 
test it with my own podcast and also through my coaching with other podcasters. And it's really a very effective episode formula that gets you to think about your episode in a structural way so that, you know, you can you can achieve a higher level of conversion right from the get go instead of, you know, fumbling through like most of the podcaster podcast hosts when they first started because they're new to the audio medium and it takes a while to kind of find their own sweet spot through trial and error. I'm not saying that's not necessary. That's completely necessary. But this gives you a good foundation mm -hmm. that you can, you know, innovate and deviate from. But this is like essential pieces of okay. the elements that you will need in your episode in order to actually hook your listeners. I'm in hooked. <laughs> I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I'm there. <laughs> beginning, Natasha, when you brought up my opening and you said, boom, that's something everyone can learn from right here. You've got to have your own personality. And you alluded to that you wanted to share more about structure and personality. And I, I, I totally recognize you've got a product and we're not going to pull back the curtain on all five people can get your product. And we'll talk about that a little later about your masterclass. Can you give us some tips? Can you uh, give us some insight here about that. Oh yeah, totally. So let's just first use use your your own but opening as an example. So since we are talking about podcasts on a podcast, this is really funny that we are going meta here. So so remember when you first talk when you first started, you told people um, about your recent trip, right? Yeah. So so that was something that is very personal. It doesn't necessarily have like a real, very direct linkage to the topic of the uh, of this episode per se or the show in general. But that brings in that brings more humanness to your voice. That brings more personality to your voice. And that is the first part of this formula. Is one part you need to think about how to build trust with your listeners. And humanness is one way to build that trust. And the other ways to build a trust is to, you know, demonstrate your expertise, demonstrate your vulnerability, and demonstrate your kindness. So these are four elements that you can use to, you know, build trust. And that is the, you know, one part of the podcast episode formula. It has to be there. Otherwise, you know, um, if you people who who have guests on their shows, who run interview shows, are you know a lot of a lot of hosts they don't do this, and then you know they have new listeners coming in because they're interested in one specific guest, and then they never listen again because you haven't hooked people with that building trust piece. So, wow. so, so really, you know, um, I give the example of when you first talk about, you know, your trip, it seems like a pretty, you know, mundane thing, but it's actually not because you're telling people a story about your life and, and, you know, building that relatableness with people. So that's a piece of humanness and other things that you can do, you know, sharing emotional moments in your life with your loved ones on your podcast and and also, you know, the host can you can share your struggles and your self doubts, your failings, your disappointments. These are ways to build that humanness, to build that vulnerability, accessibility um, with your listeners. Because you know, one thing is, I think some people when they started podcasting, they don't realize this is podcast is not is not the same as radio. And, you know, a lot of times podcast hosts, they think like, I just do the same as um, what I hear on, on the radio, which is, you know, you hear the radio hosts, they're always so polished. They have mm -hmm. such a smooth voice and they always, you know, come off as like so suave and polished. But that is a different medium. And the podcast medium is really it thrives on intimacy. It thrives on humanness. And 
you know, that's that's podcast listeners. That's they expect more of that from the host. It's different、mm. from what people expect from radios or TV shows. Oh my God, that's so important! Thank you for pointing that out. Totally different modality and a way to approach it and be in it. Super. So, also a, something you mentioned here, Natasha, was how you position your podcast. I'll just go through the three. It was how you position your podcast, the formatting. Is it going to be interview or solo? And you talked about structure. And within structure, you said building trust, being human, demonstrate your expertise, be vulnerable, your kindness, share your emotional moments, feelings, disappointments, etc. And coming back to the positioning your podcast and. Your niche. How about people who are experts, who are coaches, who are entrepreneurs? How do they understand how to position themselves? What the right podcast process is for them? So you know there are a few different ways to think about this. I, I'll share a couple. Okay. So one of the things is if you when you have a、um, when you have a business already a consulting business a coaching business. Obviously, you want to, you know, talk to the same people on your podcast, talk、uh, target the same group of listeners as your ideal customers, right? That seems like a no brainer, and that's what most people do. And but that is one way to think about it: is when you you have a product or service that you offer, but what what is a related Problem. What is a related issue that your ideal customer will be interested in solving that is related to your offering, and that can be, you know, the topic, the theme to your podcast. So I think maybe you know this.、Uh, um, this is better illustrated with example. Now, for example, I have a. Personal coaching business. Aside from Sandwise, I also have you know personal growth coaching business, and I also have you know personal growth type of products for sale for people who are、um, empathic light beings,、mm. who are empath and who want to thrive more in their business in their life, and that's my target audience because that's who I am, and so. In designing my podcast, it's really you know I took the first approach is okay. So these my ideal customers. What else do they want? What else can I solve? What problem can I solve for them? In order to you know get them also, I will I will.、Um, Get this group of ideal customers interested, but at the same same time, build a bridge to easily move people onto the next stage of their journey.、Mm-hmm. Now, for example,、um, I have a new.、Um, I just launched a new audio course. It's called a Power Mornings. It's a course to teach people a daily practice to help people increase their productivity and joy, specifically for people who are empath. So,、um, on my podcast, I talk a lot about, you know,、um, how to increase your impact and influence in the world as an empath. So, I just did a episode, for example,、um, directly on this topic, and and the reason that it's related to the product that I have for sale is because. When people listen to the episode, the conclusion there that、um, that I uh, that uh, I teach people is that when you are empath, that you have these advantages and disadvantages <laughs> in terms of your ability in influencing people. And I know you can probably relate to this, Debbie, because、yes. I can tell you're an empath. So, 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 and then through this episode, the conclusion I reached is. Um, it really, if you want to increase your impact, you need to increase your centeredness. You need、hmm. to have more clarity in your center in terms of who you are and what you are about. So, so that is that is also a topic that I teach a lot. 
in my podcast in general. But then it naturally segues into the product because the product, the course itself, what it one of the things it teaches people is to how to increase that centeredness. Mm. And we can listen to your podcast. Is it only on soundwise.com or is it in other places? Oh, it's it's uh, anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. You can just, you know, search for my name, Natasha Che, and it will show up. It's called The True Voyage. If people want to, you know, if you want to get a, you know, a real example of what I'm talking about here, you can go, you know, the example I just mentioned and go to this uh, episode called uh, um, How to Increase how empath can uh, increase their um, impact and influence in the world. Become centered. I love that. Fantastic. So when we come back, I think where I want to go next is to find out a little bit more about a way that we can use guests um, for business results for the podcaster and the guest, maybe where her master class is going to be because I'm a bit intrigued myself if I might say so (laughs) and uh, stay with us because we're just getting started and as Natasha saying this loyalty we can build it and let's build some right now you can subscribe to this show Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger so many places spaces you can go there's iTunes there's Player FM there's iVooks in Spain there's Stitcher Spreaker YouTube iHeartRadio tune in and ta-da, BBS Radio, leave a review. Actually, it counts. And we read them and it helps others to be encouraged to listen. So dare to create your dreams into your reality. Dare to live bigger than currently seems possible and stay right there. Natasha and I will be back. What is LinkedIn and why should you be on it? Wondering what in the world people use LinkedIn for? You will be surprised how much is available on this popular business social network. Go to www.yourconnectionconsultant.com. Did you know that 64% of all social media traffic to websites is driven by LinkedIn? Rhonda Share, known as the LinkedIn Diva, will explain how to double your business using LinkedIn. Don't be left out. Learn how to leverage LinkedIn today. Rhonda Share, the LinkedIn expert, is your connection consultant at www.yourconnectionconsultant.com. What books are you reading? Are you ready for a must-read? Winner of the Inspirational Book of the Year Award and international bestsellers, Dare to Dream, This Life Counts by Debbie Dashinger, as well as the acclaimed Wisdom to Success, The Surefire Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams. Buy the books from Amazon today. U.S. Book Review and Writer's Digest said these are critics' picks. By Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream and Wisdom to Success contain gems to live your life by. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beingyouclass.com Hey everybody, this is Dr. Dane here, and I would like to invite you to an adventure in being. I've just written and finished a new book known as Being You, Changing the World. Are you one of those dreamers? One of those people who's always known that other possibilities should be available but haven't yet been able to see them be created? Well, I wrote this book for you. In it, you'll find tools, processes, and unique perspectives to change the things you've always wanted to change but didn't know how. In it, you'll find an invitation to a different possibility for a way that we can be in this world that changes not only our lives, but by being us, allows us to contribute to changing everything planet-wide that doesn't work. Are you aware that truly great people, truly being them, is the only thing that has ever created a great change on this planet? Are you willing to step up? Are you willing to be one? 
Check out a copy of my new book, Being You, Changing the World. I invite you to go to beingyoubook.com for a free gift. All right, you ready? Yes. yes. Okay, Natasha, we're, we're back just in do five, 10 minutes four, next three, week. two, we're back. Tuning in. Welcome, welcome. This is Debbie Dashinger, Dear to Dream, and I'm interviewing Natasha Che, PhD. Love this podcaster, PhD. So I do want to start with the idea of sales because it's really an interesting thing to navigate for all entrepreneurs. I'm going to say as somebody who has, I think, almost my entire circle of friends are all entrepreneurs. Most of them do exceptionally well out into the world. And because I also have clients myself, I help people with books, bestsellers, I get them scheduled on interviews. So I also know from talking to a lot of people that then there's the ones who don't have sales. And that's the biggest frustration for entrepreneurs. Using podcasting, what is a way to share one's knowledge? And I know you've said some really good points, but I want to talk specifically about how can we cause listeners to buy from us, our interview guests? Is there a guarantee result that can happen with podcasting or a secret? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can share one thing is, you know, related to how you share your knowledge on the podcast. And this is, this applies, by the way, everything we set so far about, you know, episodes, it applies to both the solo episodes that you do. And also for if, if you're thinking of doing guest interview type of podcast, because how it translates into guest interview is really, you know, um, People want to, as a host, you want to ask your guest the right questions to bring out these right elements from your guest in order to increase that conversion for them as well. But one of the things that I often see people do not sufficiently when they are on their podcast episodes is they don't lay out the problem that they're helping their listener to solve very clearly. So a lot of, uh, you know, podcast hosts and also people who do, you know, YouTube channels and any video channels, what people do is instinctively, because they know so much about their topic, they will grab a topic and then it just go directly into sharing about that topic, into sharing that solutions that they're helping their listener to solve. Like, for example, um, I have a client who's, uh, you know, image consultant and she would do episodes like um, you know how to choose the best color uh, for your body type body type Hmm. Um, you know how to choose the you know right combination of outfit for your body type that type of thing and she will go like directly into um, here is how you choose (laughs) the right color but that is really you know not a very effective way to actually take your listener through that journey because you have not established why this is so important and why this is a worthy problem for your listeners to pay attention to. Mm. So so the reason this is so important because we are all so busy every day and life is full of problems and we can never solve all of the problems and we cannot pay enough money to solve everything that needs to be solved. But really what your job as a podcast host or, you know, as a, you know, if you host a YouTube channel, what you want to do is you want to bring people's attention to why this is is such an important problem for them to solve. Can I stop you here? Because I, Like as a business person, I totally get it. I even know when you set up a website, when you're uh, talking to an audience, this is everything. If you don't identify the problem, how how does anyone grasp that you have a solution or that they fit that problem? I would love you to give us a personal example because you do this, all of this, and this is how you've created on the other side of your career, a successful career. Can you start to give examples how you you run this? What are the problems you show people? How do you show them the problems? What is your process, Natasha? 
Yeah, sure. So um, for I'll give you the example that uh, for my own podcast, The True Voyage, right? So um, when I start a when I start an episode, you know, obviously we talk about the building trust piece that needs to be there, and also um, when I share a topic, um, I don't just go right into, you know, what's the answer. I talk about what's my personal story, what's my personal failures around this, around this topic, and what I see other people um, not doing right. For example, we talk about you know the um, my episode uh, that I did to promote my uh, new audio course. What I share with people is you have as the empath. You have these tremendous gifts uh, because it's so easy for you to relate to people, to know their inner thoughts and feelings. But the downside is it's so really hard to actually establish establish that boundary. And for empath, it's really hard to uh, not to be swayed away by other people's energy. And that is a problem. So then I go into the details of how that problem has manifested for me. I talk about, I gave an example of, you know, how I lost a client on the phone because I was swayed by that person's energy mm. instead of, you know, uh, I was being influenced instead of influencing people. So give examples and, you know, give quotes and stories of the problems, the problem that you're helping your listener to solve. And then I give the solution of, you know, I think as empaths, we all need to practice this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So what it does is, you know, when you just give people the solution, people don't realize oftentimes what, how valuable that solution is for them. And but once you actually tell your listeners, you actually, you know, explain and elaborate why this is a problem worth solving, you suddenly make your listeners realize, oh, um, yeah, I do have this problem and it is impacting my life and I do want to solve it. Otherwise, you know, you just give people the solution straight away and many people will be like, oh, that's nice. I guess I learned something new today. Bye. Right. So, <laughs> so they're, so they're less likely to actually feel motivated to do something more about it. And that is what you want to take your listeners through the journey is you want them to do something more about it and not just to, you know, hear the piece of information and be done with it. Absolutely. And that's of course where your funnel if we can call it that part comes in so we can move people forward. This is amazing. So much more. We've got one segment left. So stay with us when we come back. We'll be getting a little bit more from Natasha about boosting listener loyalty and maybe a daily practice that you can use to keep yourself grounded that she uses for herself as an empath. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Hi. My name is Arjuna Arda, and I'm the author of the new book, Radical Brilliance. Have you ever stopped to consider why Albert Einstein came up with the general theory of relativity? Emmeline Pankhurst got the vote for women, and Steve Jobs rethought the way we understand computers and cell phones, while many of us just watch in amazement and applause on the sidelines. What is it that causes some people to have original ideas which change the world? Radical Brilliance is the answer to that question, and it presents four very different kinds of subjective experience and brainwave activity, which when they come together in a human life, radically increase your chances of being brilliant. Come visit RadicalBrilliance.com, where I've prepared a free five-day mini-course that explains all of the principles of your brilliant life. All right, you ready one last time? Okay, yes, sir. Let's do it. Sounds great. We're back in five, four, three, two. You're back. 
Welcome back, Debbie Dashinger, and I'm speaking with Natasha Che at MySoundWise.com. I want to go right to your product because I'm super interested, actually. You have a podcast master course, you said, and I think the URL, correct me, MySoundWise.com slash conversion. Is that right? Yes. So oh. this is a course that will be uh, coming up in August. And, you know, we shared a lot about today about, you know, how to increase conversion of your podcast, how to structure your episodes. And really in this course, we will go much deeper in terms of, you know, from the beginning of how you, you know, position your podcast, how you design your podcast and what what type of guests do you invite if that's the type of uh, um, if interview is your thing, or how do you structure your solo podcast to come up with the content that's needed to actually, you know, increase that in conversion. And after your episodes are published, also, you need to, you know, think about how you built your listener communities. And also, we talked a little bit about, you know, in the last segment, um, how you increase, how you actually, what, what can you actually do to increase that listener loyalty and yeah. the community building piece that's also covered in that course is a very important component. And one of the things I can share is, you know, in your episode, you really want to engage with your listener as much as possible by actually tell people you have a community and it's amazing, like so many people don't do this, you know, you have these uh, great reviews on iTunes and, you know, uh, people writing you emails. And these are things that, you know, as a host, you want to bring up, if not in every episode, but at least in majority of your episodes, you want to involve your community, you want to mention, you know, um, Debbie wrote in today to tell me da 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 da. Um, or th this week we got like two new reviews and uh, they said such and such. <laughs> um, because because what, what it does is it does at least two things, okay? First, it tells people that it builds authority. And, you know, people are always interested in, 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 we are all interested in more in things that other people are interested in. So you show people, hey, real people are interested in my podcast and I have a community there. And also, it, you demonstrate to people that you encourage this kind of, you know, activity, this kind of interaction. So sometimes I, you know, I will name the names of my listeners on, on the show and I will mention, you know, the comments they put on my episodes and the discussion I had with them, you know, off the episode. And people will write to me and say, oh, my God, I can't believe that I just heard my name on your show. It's such an honor, you know, people feel flattered. The thing is, you, you do these things and you make people realize, oh, uh, maybe I want to put a comment too. Maybe I want to join a community. So it's a demonstration effect as well. This is so perfect. I'm actually literally working on this today. I'm putting together some new banners and so forth for the show. Just, you know, when you've been doing it as long as I have, refreshment of what you have out there is very important. So in refreshing it, I was just looking at my testimonies and they're phenomenal. I've got one from Brooke Craven saying, Debbie, host of Dare to Dream podcast, highlights all aspects of motivation and inspiration in this can't miss podcast. The host and expert guests offer insightful advice that's helpful to anyone that listens. Like, thank you. It's beautiful. And then some somebody by the name of LL Cool Michael. <laughs> great name. LL Cool Michael wrote in, I've been a subscriber for a while. Always a great listen. And then Justin Shank, an absolute rock star host who gets great conversation from her guests, motivation, inspiration, insightful advice on this Do Not Miss podcast. So perfect because I was working on it for more banner things, but <laughs> to totally start bringing it into the conversation too. Yes. Yes. Those are great testimonials. You should mention them more. And also what I tell people is, uh, you know, you don't, um, when you mention these uh, great things that people say about you, you, you want to come as 
you want to come from the position of gratitude,、mm-hmm. and you come, you want to mention those from the position that you know that you know what a impact that has had, what people said has had on you as a host, because you know, well, obviously. That better be true, <laughs> because you know when I read like people wrote to me because it, it really it brightens us, brightens up my day, and it really you know has a impact has a transformational impact on me as well. What my listeners say to me, so it motivates me to you know produce more content, better content. So I tell them so <laughs> on the episode. Because it's always good to make your listeners feel good. At the same time, it doesn't sound like you're bragging. Love, love this. I gotta ask you because I want you to brag for a minute, Natasha. When I saw you last in April, we were at the New Media Summit together, and you were doing these interviews, right? You were recording people and asking questions, and I was amongst those that you taped for your interview. And I just want to follow up and find out what happened to that. Where did that information go? Oh yeah, that we are going to, you know,、um, make it. Yes, you're. Yes, you're absolutely right. So I did a lot of these,、uh, you know, very short pieces of interviews of、um, podcast hosts, prominent podcast hosts,、um, of these hosts sharing their tips,、uh, their experiences of doing podcast, and. Those are quite invaluable, I think, for anybody who's just starting their podcast, and specifically for people who are starting a interview podcast, because most of those tips are related to how you interview guests and the do's and don'ts. And we are going to put them together as a article、um, on Soundwise. And you know, if you go to check out my Soundwise dot com dot slash blog,、uh, that article. You know, will be published there. Fantastic! And I also want to urge people to go to Soundwise. I myself have listened to one of your audio courses, Natasha. I was very taken with your voice. That's not an easy thing to do, but you had this really melodic, relaxing voice.、Uh, you're, I don't know how you did what you did, but the inflection, everything was just beautiful for an audio book or audio course. So I'm going to highly recommend people check that out. And.、Uh, Let's go here. This is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream, Natasha? What are your future dreams and goals? You know,、uh, this is something I have actually never, never shared publicly on air.、Um, when I was a teenager, my dream was always to be. You know, people ask me, you know, who do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be Oprah.、Mm-hmm. I want to, you know, because she looks so good, she sounds so good, and people like her. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but you know, what I didn't realize is like, really, I was drawn to doing work that transformed people's lives. So.、Uh, I took a huge detour of career. I picked something that seems like a lot more、uh, reasonable, <laughs> a lot more practical.、Uh, most people would say,、uh, doing more left brain kind of work. But you know, for me right now, I am、uh, really. It's it's been such a journey for me to coming into my own becoming, to coming into my own true self, which is really to. Transform people's lives, both through、uh, my own personal development teaching work, and also through Soundwise to help more transformational leaders to share their knowledge and to transform more people's lives. And because I I can't just do it by myself, I'm very ambitious. I I want to you know leverage more transformational leaders' power to reach a lot more people, and that's also you know. Um, one of my motivation of starting a platform like Soundwise is to leverage those leaders' power to impact a lot more people than what my own small personal, you know,、um, personal knowledge or personal teaching can reach. So you became your own version. 
of Oprah through the filter of who Natasha is. And I love that you've achieved that, that you are so beautiful and so inspiring people and helping them to their greatest self. So, so kudos to you for making that come true and for continuing on that path. Thank you so much, Natasha, for coming on today and sharing your brilliance on Dare to Dream. Thank you, Debbie. It's been such a pleasure. Mm. I end today's show with this quote from Steve Jobs. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Next week on Dare to Dream, I am featuring Gunther Mueller. I can tell you this guy is like knowledge beyond. Health is his gig. He's somebody else. He was a he was an aerospace engineer who changed his career and said, you know, health, cutting edge, anti-aging, this is who I am. And wow, what he's doing out in the world. So you're going to want to tune in. He's going to teach us how to access and utilize the longevity gene. Again, subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Deb on the radio and subscribe to the podcast channel. Thanks for listening to Dare to Dream today. To contact the award-winning syndicated Dare to Dream radio show. Go to DebbieDashinger.com. Keep your excellent feedback and comments coming. Your host, Debbie Dashinger, is an expert at goal achievement, a media personality, an international best-selling author, and a keynote speaker. Debbie leads high-quality teleseminars on how to achieve goals, how to be a self-published best-selling author, and how to get booked on radio. All classes are at DebbieDashinger.com. Debbie's best-selling books are Dare to Dream, This Life Counts, sold on Amazon, and her second book, Wisdom to Success, The Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams, sold online at all bookstores. Tune in again to hear the next inspiring interview guest who has turned their vision into a successful reality. Want more support in making your dreams come true? Go to DebbieDashinger.com. That's www. Dot D E B B I D A C H I N G E R dot com. You'll see videos, MP3s, archived interviews, and amazing products sharing the secret steps to making your dreams come true. Remember to dream big with every expectation that your dream will become real. Dreams are free, so free your dreams. What do you dare to dream? I'm standing now, waiting for my time to be all that I can be. It's so easy to forget, life is in my hands, and I can change it if I want. Nothing's impossible.